Okay guys, this is a really simple project. Uh, I've done some looking around trying to find a good camp grill and I uh, haven't come up with too much. There's some really nice ones like the Purcell Trench. I'd love to have that grill, but it runs, uh, I think if my memory serves me correct, about a hundred bucks, which is pretty pricey. Um, it is lightweight. It looks like it's really well made. Uh, I believe it's an American company, so the production value is pretty high and good. Um, but as being somebody who likes to be self-reliant, I came up with my own design. Um, I came up with a diff couple different models. Basically, the start model is a uh, ordinary grill from a stove. You can see there's nothing special about it. Uh, the main thing that you're looking for is something that can be split in half. So you've got this cross member and uh, that's just going to allow you to be able to cut down this section here and get that narrow width that you want. You don't obviously want to carry a full grate into the woods with you. Uh, these smaller varieties that I have here. Um, this one actually didn't get bent from the fire if you're wondering. I ran it over with the car so it's, it's all bent out of shape. This is my preferred size though. It's uh, maybe six inches wide and uh, it's got a good length on it as well. I don't believe I shrunk that one down very much. Uh, this one is a kind of a really small model. You can see it's tiny, very portable, very lightweight, weighs practically nothing. I could take that anywhere. Uh, these are pant legs. They're just old worn out pant legs and that serves you to uh, put that back in your backpack and you're not going to get it full of soot. Uh, same with these, just another army issue pant. Uh, if you're fancy, or if you're lucky I should say, you'll get an end like that which is tied up. Um, and then the other end, I got my mom to uh, stitch it up nice at the other side here. And the same with this one here, had a nice cinch tight on the other side. The other end I just keep open, it's fine. Leave that in your pack and you're all set to go. So as far as tools, this is a really simple job. You only need two tools, a decent quality hacksaw and a file, that's it. And a decent pair of gloves will help because the ends, once you start cutting them, they get pretty sharp. So I'm gonna get busy. Again, it's a really simple job. The, uh, the file, you'll use the file at the end to, to uh, soften up the edges so they're not sharp. So if you don't have a, a carrying case like that and you put it in your bag or it slips out, it's not gonna, it's not gonna cut up your, um, your bag and rip up everything to shreds because the, the metal does get really sharp after you've cut it. So let's get to work and I'll show you the process.
Okay, so once you've got it cut, you'll end up something like this. Actually, something interesting happened this time. One of the uh, spokes broke, or uh, should I, I should say de uh, decoupled here. It's not going to be a big deal because you don't use most of it anyway. But I would, uh, I would probably remove that at that point because it's, uh, it's pretty sharp and pointy, but that could be cut off as well. But uh, this is the first time I've ever happened. Maybe it's because I'm, I'm using a uh, surface that's not very flat with the rock here. But obviously you're not going to come out and do this in the woods. You're probably going to do it in your, in your backyard on a table or bench. So that's, that's not going to happen for you. Now at this point, all these edges that you cut, they're sharp. And uh, they're going to catch on things. So you're going to take your file now at this point here. And uh, you're just going to grind that back uh, until you get them nice and smooth. I won't demonstrate that, but this is just a plain file. Nothing special about it. Now here's a, here's a finished one. If you can make that out, you can see I've just run it out of edge like that until basically I can slide right down here and not catch on anything. And then pay, pay special attention to the uh, corners as well. You don't want those corners to be sharp because they're going to be hitting uh, your bag more than anything else. So anyway, just take that file, run it down, you're good to go. These are designed for high heat. Uh, I've used this other one here for probably 100 fires so far. And uh, besides this, the fact it's all bent because I ran it over, it's, uh, it's in fine shape. Uh, you don't want to leave these on the fire for, uh, you know, the whole night. Once you're done using them, take them off because they will start to glow red hot and then they'll become, they'll get into a stage where they become very brittle. So you want to use this while you're cooking only, you know, half an hour or something like that. And then when you're done, just flip it off, remove it from the heat, let it cool off and then you're good to go. Uh, obviously don't put this in your bag while it's still warm. It's just common sense, right? Uh, and I probably wouldn't throw it in the water to cool it off uh, because it's metal it takes Practically no time at all just to cool off by itself And then once it's cool to the touch then you can throw it in your bag or backpack uh, So yeah, these are good. They cost nothing uh, I managed to get these uh, through Kijiji. I just put an online ad saying I was looking for metal grates for uh, a, uh, a Project I was working on and I actually ended up getting four at once. Um, the lady had them stored away because I think her husband was going to do something with them too, but he never managed to do them, so she gave them to me. <laughs> Probably a little bit of a payback for having them clutter up her house for a while. Uh, if you can't, if you don't have an online source or that it doesn't work, you can go to scrapyard. Uh, stoves are getting thrown out regularly i mean i just drove by the scrapyard the other day and there was probably 20 stoves each of the stoves is going to have one of these throw the uh, the operator a couple bucks maybe a toonie or something two bucks you know if you live in canada we call them toonies but uh throw them in uh and i'm sure they'll be happy to part with them <clears throat> um and the next thing is if you want to shrink it down all you got to do is cut the main beams off and you end up with something like that think wisely about what you're what you intend to use it for if you want something lightweight and obviously go for go for the smaller variety But if you do do something this small when you prop it up on the fire Make sure you think about the fact that you're going to be having rocks on either side here So if your rocks are going to be holding it up It's not going to be a stable platform and you're going to have only a very small amount of space to cook on but if you're just using one pot and you're going minimalistic, this is the size to go. I haven't used this yet because I tend to, to do uh, more canoe camping so I can afford to take something longer. Uh, the reason you use a long one, again, <clears throat> you get your rocks on the platform like that and then you have room to put a pot and a pan so you have more space to work with. And this gives you a lot more, uh, <clears throat> more stability, more, more leeway as far as how you want to do your fire and your placement. Uh, when you use this style, keep the front end open, put rocks on the side and the back, and then you can feed your fire underneath. And uh, it works really well. So this thing cost me maybe 20 minutes to make, you know, a few minutes to field the phone call. Maybe I have to go pick up the rack. So for the savings of 100 bucks, I have I've unlimited supply of, of these racks. They're, <clears throat> they're never going to leave. And they're very 
easy to find and like I say they can suit all sorts of different purposes I have no idea what this weighs but you know <clears throat> nothing practically nothing uh, as compared to the Purcell Trench grill it's probably very similar uh, this is a little bit heavier obviously because it's you know double the size uh, but they're highly durable and if they and if they don't work out for you then pitch them out or recycle them send them to the to the scrapyard back where they belong and they'll and and the scrapyard will turn this back into something useful but anyway i thought this would be a good tip for you guys uh way to get around the uh, campfire situation they do sell some um others for about 10 15 bucks uh i looked at them they're heavy really heavy and they have these legs that stick out uh, i'm not a big fan of the legs primarily because i can find a rock almost anywhere i go to set this up and the legs i find just get in the way when you try to pack it up plus those racks are huge i mean they're probably double this size you know they come out to about that that there you can't put that in a backpack so uh, I know a lot of guys camp in provincial parks and a lot of those already have grills there so you don't need to bring your own but where I go you know nine times out of ten there's no grill uh, I do end up sometimes in places where I typically don't want to be and there's a grill there so that means uh, somebody else has already been but where I go I need to bring my own grill anyway so we've got an airplane overhead so this is a good time to uh, say to the next time good luck